Hi, welcome to this video from Zimmer and Peacock about the miniaturization of clinical analyzers to point of care diagnostics. So a quick um, sort of summary of the situation is this, that um, historically, and even today, that there are cl large clinical analyzers or clinical lab analyzers that will exist in centralized locations like a central hospital and blood samples, for example, will be taken from patients in the surrounding area and they'll come into the uh, centralized laboratory and they'll get loaded up onto these analyzers and a um, panel of tests will get performed on those um, samples. And this is very good in a sort of location where you actually do want to have a centralized testing. But I think it's worth saying that even before COVID-19, there was a real shift in the idea that actually not all testing and not all diagnostics <coughs> excuse me had to take place in a central lo location there was already moves to um, have this tabletop devices this particular tabletop device allows it's one sample at a time but it can it can do a sort of comprehensive metabolic panel um, within its own little cartridge there's been a shift towards sort of handheld devices I mean, this is one of the grandfather's handheld devices, but it does essentially one analyzer at a time. Um, and then there's very much driven by the glucose or the diabetes testing space. Um, these very small form factor um, meters with um, little disposable strips. So there's definitely been a movement from um, hospital only centralized blood testing, for example, down to um, almost consumer electronics type um, ho at home um, testing. Now, the nice thing about these um, large instruments is you can rack up, you know, tens to hundreds of samples um, and it will do multiple tests upon those samples. You know, so the comprehensive metabolic panel, for example, you know, there'll be um, small molecules in there like glucose. There'll be electrolytes in there like sodium and potassium that can get tested. There'll be um, enzymes like um, ALP, A, I'm sorry. ALP, ALT, um, and AST, there'll be um, proteins um, detected, for example. So they're great because multiple samples and multiple tests upon each sample. Now, that's not to say that's not actually possible also with um, handheld type devices. So at Zimmer and Peacock, we are an ISO 13485 contract developer, contract manufacturer. And in our um, portfolio, we also have the ability to do more than one analyte at a time in a handheld type device. But the subtleties of which tests you should and can do and is really sort of about your market vision um, and, a, and your budget and the timelines that you have. Now, obviously, it's easier just to sort of, you know, focus in on one analyte and say, that's the analyte that I'm going to detect in a sort of point of care device. So creatinine, for example, would be the kind of analyte that um, people maybe approach us and ask us for to do a sort of point of care test on that. Um, now. The reason we're having this conversation is really because at Zimmer and Peacock, we do have um, a whole host of um, biosensors, you know, from glucose to lactate to sodium, potassium to pH. So we have many of the um, tests that would actually appear in something like a comprehensive uh, metabolic panel, a CMP. And what our business model is, is to um, work for... Uh, companies and entrepreneurs who want to develop probably point of care devices and take some of the testing that was historically done on a um, clinical analyzer and move it to a sort of point of care device. So we have a technology stack which involves sensors and if the sensors don't exist we can develop in what's called a proof of principle. We have um, the sensors, um, we can put the sample on the sensor and then the sensors can plug into our meters. Now our meters are good because they have Bluetooth connectivity which means that we can um, send, or rather we can run the meter using the app. The app can receive the essentially the raw data back from the meter, and then we can upload that um, data to a proprietary database that we have called Julie. Now, Julie is a cloud database that's able to receive electrochemical biosensor and electrochemical IVD data. I'm not gonna touch upon it today, but it also has API or application program interface um, capability so other people can call upon our cloud and get our data into their cloud but that's not the point for today so for julie we would send um, the raw signal from a clinical test up to julie so we would have um, actual signal up there not numbers but signals um, now what we would do with those is pass them through an algorithm and give ourselves a point of care result now what we're expecting is 
this is um, this video is most appropriate to people who actually are trying to develop an assay where a clinical assay already exists. And so what we would say is this: take that sample, test it on a um, a minimally viable product that ZP has potentially given to you, and also test the same sample on the clinical analyzer and get to get a clinical result. Now between the clinical result and the point of care result, there's a difference. But Julie can look at that difference and actually um, derive a second algorithm. So we get a second algorithm with a new point of care result where we're essentially minimizing the difference. And we keep on minimizing or looping until we minimize the difference between the clinical result and the point of care result. Um, and this workflow that I describe is actually one of the most efficient ways of going from idea where the idea is based on a pre-existing um, clinical test to a clinical test reduced to a point of care um, device. And so what I would say is this, if, if, this, um, if working with ZP um, for the development and manufacture of a um, point of care device for a cl clinical assay sounds interesting, then um, please don't hesitate to contact us. Okay, thanks very much.